this is Tony from Cooking Around. Welcome again to my kitchen. And today, uh, I'm gonna make something very hard and very special, a cottage pie. Now, I don't do it typically the same way as uh, a lot of people do it. I don't use the cheese, because I want the flavor of the meat to come out. So I have all these goodies here, and let's get started. This is going to be, all right, here we go. We have our pan already hot. We add about two tablespoons of uh, oil and I take two medium onions diced and I put that in. I'll just stir that all around. Now I have the flame on medium high now. I'll just let that cook for about a minute and a half. And two medium carrots diced and about a stalk and a half of celery sliced. And now about a quarter cup of butter. Now you can use more butter for this recipe if you want. And about a teaspoon of salt just to help it come along. At this point I just want the butter to melt and infuse into the vegetables, but I do not want to overcook the vegetables. Now you can see the vegetables right now have softened. And what I basically do is turn off the heat and remove now this pan. The pan heated it up again. I took the vegetables, put it on the side, and now I'm about to do something really, really naughty. Now you don't have to do this, but it gives that little extra oomph and taste in the meat. I'm using a tablespoon of pig fat. Yes, pure pig fat. I know a lot of you out there are saying, "Oh, I'm so good, but it's going to give me high cholesterol." Well, you know something. You're right, but if you don't want to use that, just put two tablespoons of oil. So now we're gonna let this heat up. Okay, now I have here about 800 grams of ground beef, and I had them ground especially for me. I chose the beef with the medium fat content in it to give it some flavor. You can use lean, but you're not gonna get that nice. Uh, texture taste as if you would use a medium. So it's up to you, so we'll put that in there. And we brown. Don't worry about it sticking on the bottom. It's all good. And we turn it. And we keep on moving that around on medium high until it becomes brown. Now you can see that the meat is all brown, but still, if you look here, there's too much liquid and I'm going to remove this liquid right now by putting the lid on top and removing this liquid here. Okay, I removed part of the liquid here. There's still some there, so I'm just going to let it cook for another three to five minutes just to take the rest of the liquid from the bottom. Now you can leave it if you want. I like to do it this way. And now we have 300 milligrams of um, beef stock. Now this is only half, the other half is on the side. And try to get the best quality beef stock you can or just dissolve a couple of uh, cubes into boiling water. And now I put that on. Give it a nice stir. There's liquid on the bottom again, but it's the liquid that I want at this point. And now we go back to our vegetables that we put to the side and we put that all back inside. And now we stir that all around. Now how is that cottage pie starting to look? So we move that all around. And now I'm going to add about a tablespoon of Lee and Perry's or you can add which is your sauce, whichever one you want. And I put, well, about tablespoon and a half. Oh, what the heck, a little bit more. I like it. Stir that around. Boy, is that ever looking good. Mm, 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 mm. And now the famous, famous pepper. I would say about a teaspoon of pepper. And about a teaspoon of thyme. Now you can add more or you can add less. And now you grab the rest of half of the beef stock and you add about one tablespoon of white flour or corn flour. And I want you to whisk that really, really well. 
And then I want you to take that and put that into your mixture, just like that. How is that starting to look? Now it's important for the taste test, for salt. So you grab a little bit here. And remember, again, what I said, this is for you, not for me. And we taste it. You know, I think it's just perfect. I will not add any more salt or anything else. Now, you can add other herbs and spices you want to here. You can add a little bit of hot sauce if you want. But I'm just going to make it natural like this and then add the hot sauce later onto my individual plate in case, just in case my guests don't like it that hot. So then, what I do is I add some parsley. Now, you don't have to um, put parsley into this recipe because it really doesn't call for parsley. But you know something? I like the added nutrients and vitamins that come with the parsley plus it gives it a nice look so I just put that in but like I said you don't have to so this is about half a cup of fresh parsley I use corando that's my favorite type and now we just turn off the heat and we put this to the side and go on to the next stage okay we're back I have here about a kilo of potatoes I chose the starchy type of potatoes because we're going to make mashed potatoes. So, they were boiled until they were softened and now we take our handy dandy little masher and we just make one complete circle around. So we're all smashed. And now I add about a quarter cup of butter. About a teaspoon of salt and again the famous ground pepper eh, about three quarters of a teaspoon to a teaspoon whatever you like and now we just move that one more time around just to get everything mixed now if you want the potatoes a little bit more soft just add a little bit of milk uh, Depends on your potato, depends on how thick you want it. For this recipe, I don't want to add any milk. I want the potato stick. Now I'll take your handy dandy spoon and give it a good, good stir. That is now ready. Here we are. I got my baking dish. I'm using glass. For me, it's easier to wash. Well, you can use metal or you can use a lasagna dish too if you want. So here it is. And now, we take our mixture here that we did of the meat and we put that all inside. Mmm, if you could just smell that. I love the smell of lean berries mixed in with the meat and the corn. Go. And we just spread that around and try to make that as even as possible. This is the way I like to do things. And try not to be too perfect in the kitchen because the kitchen is not a place for perfectionists. Yeah, that's done. And now we take our mashed potatoes and we put that inside. Now, this recipe is very, very special for me. It is my recipe. And I know it's my recipe because I basically stole it from my friend Emmanuel Mal, which he is a chef, a great chef in Cyprus, which I will add the link to his restaurant at the end of this video. And he's the one that came up with this recipe. And like I said, he was generous enough to leave the door open. And I went through the door and I took his recipe. He might be a little upset with me because, after all, I did put bacon fat in it and that recipe does not call for that. But, I like to be a bit of a troublemaker. Now at this point you can add cheese to the top if you want. I'm not going to add any cheese. I like it just the way it is. Now at this point I like to take my fork and just basically, I like to run it like this on top. And the reason is, for some reason, it makes it more crispy. And then the size, I just tuck in the size like this. And there we have it. Now my oven is preheated to 325 degrees. It is a gas stove. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it in there for 40 minutes and we will be back. There it is. Right out of the oven. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to let it cool down for I say about 30 minutes before we cut it. Now if you want the top to be a little bit more brown, just open the top grill and just grill it from above. But I like it like this, just when the tips start to turn brown, because I don't like too much crispiness on the top. But then again, that's what I like, whatever you like. And now just to top it off, we take some nice parsley and just sprinkle the top like that. Now, how does that look on your presentation? Absolutely awesome. So, enjoy, and thank you for being with me, and I hope to see you again on my next recipe. Thank you and goodbye.